That question uh, is actually known as the hard problem in consciousness science. Uh, and it was uh, first posited in a paper by uh, David Calmers um, called, What is it like to be a bat? Uh, and, you know, he's discussing all the developments in the science of consciousness that are all looking at correlates of neurobiological activity with conscious states, uh, which is great work, but um, it's not addressing the question of what is consciousness, and it's not addressing the question of how the brain, supposedly the brain, uh, it, uh, creates the agent of awareness, the experiencer. Um, and, you know, he, he posited it as a very simple question, uh, you know, uh, which is explaining how we don't know and probably will never know what, what it's like to be a bad. What, what, what kind of, what is its experience like? You know, its experiential world. Um, and, you know, the, the, the reason it's a hard problem is that there's no way, um, at least at that time, I don't, I don't know, if maybe neuroscience is, is uh, well, further than I'm aware, but th th there's no way that you, you could take a bat and hook up electrodes and, and monitor brainwave activity and experience what it's experiencing. Uh, you know, you can read the neurobiological correlates of conscious states, uh, but you don't know if, for instance, it sees the color blue or if it does, um, you know, what does it experience that color like? But the same way we experience that color. Um, and so uh, the, the, the hard problem in science uh, is how do you get that experience, uh, the, the, the agent that is having an experience? Uh, and of course, if it's having an experience, it has to be of something, right? Um, and one of the major problems with the conventional approach to this is that uh, it falls way short because it says, oh, that, that's easy. Um, you get that experiencer, that, that agent of awareness uh, via the uh, electrical activity of neurons in the brain uh, acting uh, as uh, computational uh, uh, units at the synapse. Um, the, the, the only problem is that uh, that does not explain how do you get consciousness from uh, electrical sparks across synaptic clefts and neurons. <laughs> you know, uh, it, it's, um, it, you know it, it's a very difficult thing explain how you would have, uh, how you would generate um, an awareness that's having this rich and detailed experience uh, and that's being generated by uh, electrochemical conduction along neurons. Um, you know, so, certainly what, what you're seeing uh, in those uh, neurobiological correlates of consciousness uh, is the uh, information processing that is occurring. Um, you know, uh, the, the conscious uh, agent of awareness is, is having an experience in, and it's processing it. Uh, and, you know, that's, we see that as this generation, all this electrical activity of the brain um, and you know, it's creating this large um, electromagnetic spatiotemporal patterns, patterns in space time, electromagnetic patterns in space time. Uh, and uh, those uh, electromagnetic patterns uh, can couple to those polarizable structures a uh, 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 quantum scale, the quantum vacuum, um, because uh, the, the quantum vacuum can behave like a plasma. 
Uh, and when you hit a plasma with an electromagnetic field, it couples together, and you can get the plasma to form a torus and spin via the electromagnetic field. You know, it, it follows the influence of the uh, uh, EM field. Uh, and that's what your brain is doing. Uh, it's generating uh, spatial temporal patterns uh, in the structure of space time uh, in, in the quantum vacuum. Um, but you know, again, that, that's just uh, leaving a memory imprint. Uh, and, and that also you know, explains how uh, uh, information can be received and transmitted in an antenna like fashion. Um, uh, you know, and th this is different from the uh, kind of uh, instantaneous information transmission that's occurring with the entire universe all at once. Um, but still, that, that doesn't explain uh, where the experiencer comes from. Uh, and what I believe in what uh, the paper discusses uh, is that the reason why it's so hard to explain uh, the generation of the experience, the, the, the agent awareness that it's having an experience, uh, why it's so hard to explain how the brain generates that is that it's not being generated by the brain. Uh, it's much more fundamental to that. Um, it's more fundamental than the unicellular uh, biological units. Uh, it's there, but it's more fundamental than even that. It's more fundamental than the pre-biological uh, chemical networks, uh, chemical um, uh, metabolic networks that led to the emergence of the first cells. Um, because the uh, organizational influences, they allowed those pre-biological systems unbound by a cell uh, to form such uh, intricate and integral connectivity and coherence and organizational synergy that they become a cell, that the uh, impetus, the force behind that is sentience, is consciousness of the field. That information feedback and feed forward process, it's occurring all the time. Uh, so the experiencer uh, is even more fundamental than that. <laughs> uh, and in fact, uh, if you follow this thread all the way, that's there at the beginning. Um, be because uh, it is a part of the mechanism, the, the uh, uh, intrinsic mechanism of the universe in generating uh, order uh, organizational synergy uh, and coherence so that there is something to experience. <laughs>